The science of the scientific method. Think like a scientist. Hey, Martine. Hey, Martine, the science queen. Hey, Katie. Oh, Katie, knock, knock. Who's there? Tank. Tank who? You're welcome. Oh, I get it. That's cute. That's mm. nice. Okay, a little laughter on that one. Um, Katie, knock, knock. Who's there? Says. Says who? Says me. All right, noted. No laughter on that one. That wasn't even a joke. That was a statement. That's personal. So Martine, what's up with all the jokes? Why are you writing? Well, Katie, I'm trying to answer the big question. Which knock-knock joke will get the most laughter? Very important. I can see why you would want to answer that. How's it, uh, how are you doing that? I'm going to think like a scientist, of course. You know, scientists are very curious people. They have all kinds of questions about the world around them. Like which breakfast food tastes the best, or which ice cream tastes the sweetest. Or what flavor of ice cream will melt the fastest? Also a very important question. Indeed. After scientists choose a question that they want to answer, they follow something called the scientific method. Oh. In fact, the very first step of the scientific method is to ask a question. So Katie, you're already on the first step. Well, what are the other steps? After asking a question, scientists use what they already know to make a hypothesis or a prediction to figure out what the answer to the question might be. Oh, okay. So last night, I know my mom and I had some ice cream. I had pistachio, the better flavor, and my mom had chocolate. My pistachio ice cream melted way faster than her chocolate ice cream. So I'm going to predict or, or make a hypothesis that pistachio is the fastest melting ice cream. Mmm, pistachio. That was a choice. I'm eating nuts. It's better than mint. Anything's better than mint, but pistachio is a close second. Awesome. Nice job using what you've already experienced to make a prediction. Now, after making a hypothesis, scientists use that hypothesis to make an experiment and collect data. Oh, so they test the hypothesis with the experiment. Basically, which is what I'm doing right now. After collecting all their data or information, they take a closer look and draw a conclusion and answer to their question. And then they share the results with others so that everyone can learn. Cool! So it is cool. I actually have some friends at Pfizer who are going to show us how they use a scientific method every day. Oh, awesome. Thank you. All right, young scientists, let's watch. Hi, everyone. My name is Sungai Jackson, and I'm a scientist at Pfizer. My job includes working on several different projects to manage their timelines and to identify issues and find solutions to those issues. As a scientist, I use the scientific method almost every day to solve big problems and help people. Come with me and I'll show you. The first thing I do with my team of scientists is ask a question. Scientists are very curious people. We are always asking questions about the world around us and thinking of ways to make the world a better place. Next, we do some research to see what other scientists have already discovered about our question. After we have done our research, it's time to make a hypothesis. A hypothesis is a prediction about what we think the answer to our question will be. Through our research, we found that there are many different colored dish soaps. We wanted to know which colored dish soap works the best. Based on this information, we hypothesized that blue colored dish soap by itself works the best. Now for my favorite part, experimenting and collecting data. Experimenting is a way to test out our hypothesis and see if we're correct. When we use chemicals in our experiment, we make sure to put on safety gear to keep us safe, like a lab coat, lab goggles, and gloves. Typically, we experiment in a lab, but today we're going to model this step in a conference room. We use all types of equipment when we experiment, like beakers, microscopes, and balances. 
It is important to write down our observations or things that we see when we are experimenting. Observations could include if something changes color or changes temperature. We use our data to determine if our hypothesis from the beginning was correct or incorrect. Sometimes our experiments might not work out the way we want them to. Sometimes we might think something is going to happen and nothing happens at all. Mistakes are an important part of the scientific method. We can learn a lot from our mistakes. When we experiment, when an experiment doesn't go the way we want it to, we make sure to write it down and tell others what happened. Then we go back to the drawing board and start from the beginning. Scientists sometimes work for years to try to answer a question. Even if it's hard, we never give up. Whether our experiment does work out or if our experiment does not work out, it is important to share our results with others so they can learn from our experiences. Thinking like a scientist is so much fun. And just like all of you young scientists, I have loved science for a very long time. I knew I wanted to become a scientist when in eighth grade, I decided to participate in the Boston Public School Science Fair. I ended up winning third place and I still have the medal today. It's a little bit dusty, but it is one of my prized possessions. So keep thinking like a scientist and one day you just might be where I am today. Thank you. Wow, that was really cool seeing the scientific method in action. That was really cool, Katie. Do you want to see if we can use a scientific method to solve real life problems? Yeah, that sounds so much fun. All right, and I may even have some surprises for you and the young scientists at home. Ooh, I love surprises. I am so excited to be doing this with you, Martine. Martine? Martine? Martine! She's gone. Just like Hannah. Oh, Martine! Martine the science queen, what do you got there? Actually, Katie, I'm actually Martine the question queen. And I'll tell you why. Because, Katie, the first step in the scientific method is to ask a question. And today, our question is about these pennies. Okay, okay, Martine the Question Queen, but what question could you possibly have about pennies? Well, I found these pennies in my kitchen the other day, and I want to give them to my sister, but I don't want to give her dirty pennies. So, I want to find a way to clean them. So my question is, what liquid will work best to clean these dirty pennies? Oh, that is a great question, actually. Uh, I did something like that recently, where I had to clean all the copper door handles in my apartment, and I used vinegar and it worked out great. Ooh, Katie, you're already doing the next step of the scientific method. Brainstorming. Brainstorming? Yep, brainstorming. You're already using experiences that you've already had and things that you already know to try to come up with solutions to your question. While you were talking, I was doing even more um, um, brainstorming. Um, and I thought that we should also try cleaning the pennies with lemon juice because sometimes my mom cleans the sink with lemon juice and that also works really well. Great idea, Katie. I will add lemon juice to our list of items to, that we're going to be using to try to clean these pennies. I'm also gonna add soapy water because we know that soapy water is used to clean our hands and it does a pretty good job at that. That it does. All right, now that we have brainstormed, it's time to make predictions. <laughs> Oh yes, Katie. You see, I have a friend who's very, very much about the scientific method. Um, he goes by chicken. Yeah, I'm sorry. I mean, prediction chicken. He get, he has some feelings when we just call him chicken. You let a chicken into our set? Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, a prediction chicken? That's right. Prediction, prediction chicken. That's awesome. Um. Prediction Chicken, what do you think will be the best cleaner for our pennies? Okay. That's a good prediction, Chicken. I'm sorry, I meant, I meant, that's a good prediction, Prediction Chicken. Bye. All right, now for the next step. 
my personal favorite, experimenting. Experimenting is kind of like being an explorer, looking for our data, figuring out what we need to do. Oh, I love being an experiment explorer. All right, Katie, here you go. So, let's get to experimenting. Okay, let's do it. First, let's take one penny and put it to the side. This will be our control penny, the penny that we will compare all the other pennies to at the end. This penny will not be placed in any of our liquids. Okay. Now, next we're going to take the other three pennies and put it in the three different cups for soapy water, for vinegar, and for lemon juice. Alrighty. Soapy water, vinegar, lemon juice. Awesome job, Katie. So, we want to make sure that we pour enough vinegar to cover the penny. In the other cup, pour enough soapy water to cover that penny. And in the last cup, pour enough lemon juice to also cover that penny. Alrighty. I'm gonna open our lemon juice. Great job, Katie. Thanks. Last we have soap, and I got some water right here. Awesome, I see you're using foam soap, the fancy stuff. The fancy stuff. The best stuff that only a queen would use. Okay, now we're gonna wait 10 minutes, and then we're gonna figure out what our results are. All right. Okay, young scientists, let's wait those 10 minutes. All right, Martine, my timer just went off and now we're ready to clean our pennies and see what we find. Okay, let's take all of our pennies out of the liquids, rinse them in water, and then rub them down with a paper towel. We will then do one penny at a time so we can remember which penny was in which liquid. All right, let's start with our lemon juice. Okay. Hmm, we got some of the dirt off, but it's not looking like all of it. Okay, let's try the vinegar next. All right. Thank you. Okay, and then last, the soapy water. Ooh, this one didn't do anything. Ooh. But we do know that soapy water does clean our hands, so keep using it, young scientists. Okay, so now let's take a look at our pennies and see which one cleaned it the best. So first we have the lemon juice. What do you think, Katie? There's some shine on it. It does look like that. What about the vinegar? Mm, it's kind of dull. Still. And then what about the soapy water? It looks very dirty. Okay. So, great observations, Katie. Let's take a deeper dive and make some more observations about our results in the next step in our scientific method. Let's rank all our pennies from most dirty to least dirty. Okay. So, our dirtiest penny is definitely soapy water. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that vinegar brings us the middlest dirty one. And then lemon juice, you have a lot of um, shine coming through. Okay, great job, Katie. So way to make that deeper dive. It looks like Prediction Chicken's prediction was incorrect. <gasps> but that's okay, Prediction Chicken, because the scientific method is all about experimenting and finding out what the solution is to our problem. So if we cross out what wasn't working, we will get closer to what is. It's important that we share out our information about what we both found out. Hey, guess what? Yeah, it was the lemon juice. Yeah, no, I know. I know, I found the vinegar too. There you go. Okay, okay. Martine, I also made this poster so that we can share our results with everyone. Awesome job, Katie. Now we are truly thinking like scientists. Cool. Katie. Yeah? I think I figured it out. Oh, figured out what, Martin? What the most funny joke in the world is. Lay it on me. What do scientists use to freshen their breath? What? 
experiment. Get it? Like experiment. That's really funny, Martine. It is. I did a whole I did the whole scientific method and I figured it out. Thank you, young scientists, for joining us as we learned about the scientific method. Looks like I'm gonna have to go back to the drawing board on this one and do the whole scientific method again. Okay. We'll see you next time. This episode is brought to you by Pfizer, who is proud to support Science Club for Girls as part of its commitment to equity and to inspiring the next generation of women scientists and researchers. Pfizer, breakthroughs that change patients' lives.